Hi, I'm Lynn Stallings, your theater master talent teacher. Today, we're talking about Broadway. If Broadway is a dream of yours, then let those dreams catapult you into action. So you'll actually have a shot at it. Broadway veteran Anthony Galdi is here to share his words of wisdom. Tony has been performing on Broadway for the past 25 years. He started in Starlight Express when he was only 17 years old. And he recently completed a seven year run in Wicked. But Tony is a wealth of information and filled with showbiz stories. So let's go meet him. Come on. Hi, Tony. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for doing this. Absolutely. You're no. awesome. I'm thrilled to be doing this. Well, I'm really. so glad. So tell me how you got started. How did you get your first Broadway show? <laughs> My first Broadway show started, um, I found out about this show, Starlight Express, that was auditioning mm -hmm. in New York. I was living in California at the time and working at a theme park. And um, so I had been a speed skater. So I knew it was a perfect show for me. So I would fly to New York on Monday, audition all week, fly back and do my show Saturday and Sunday in California. And Are you I did kidding? That. No, it was insane. Four weeks I did this. I know. And then because I was 17 and knew all things. Of course. I, um, I moved <laughs> to New York because um, I figured I was going to get it. And I had seven hundred and fifty dollars, mm -hmm. which was going to get me, you know, keep me going for months. Oh sure. Clearly. Yes. So clearly. I moved to New York. Um, I did not get the show, which shocked me and only me. Um, and I waited tables for one month. They had another position that they needed to fill and they called me, uh, I came in. This was at this point, I was up to my 15th callback wow. for the show. So came in, they said, great job. We want you to come back on Monday and impress us. So work on your dancing, work on this music and come back, and so I thought, just me coming back to impress them, not a problem. And um, so during the weekend, I was crazy going to dance classes, working with a vocal coach, and on my last dance class on Sunday, I pulled a groin muscle, and the next day went no. to the audition, a, a half a block away from the Gershwin Theater stage door. I got hit by a taxi. I um, thrown in the air, hit by a taxi. Hobbled into the audition, there sat Trevor Nunn, Andrew Lloyd Webber, Arlene Phillips, the A team. Oh my gosh. And 15 guys that were also there to impress them, which I did not plan on. And um, so I hobbled through the audition and left dejected. I mean, I thought, I'm going to do this show, clearly. I'm a singer, dancer, actor, skater. I'm going to do this show eventually, but not now. And I got to my apartment and my manager had called, and uh, so I called her back. And she said, how'd it go? And I said, I did the best that I could, considering I have a taxi. And, right, right, know. right. And um, mm. she said, you have to be at the publicity office in an hour, and you start rehearsals tomorrow. And yeah. That's awesome. Insane. That's awesome. Insane. I just cry, crying, 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 what freaking What a story. Out. Yeah. Nobody has a story like that. I know. <laughs> it's pretty wackadoo. My whole career is like that. You know, everybody has a totally different journey, and um, there's no one way to get started and mm -hmm. launch a career. Um, what would you advise people to do prior to coming to New York, prior to launching this career? What do they need to have in place? Well, I think the obvious train, training, training. And mm -hmm. I tell everybody, singer, dancer, actor, you, you have to be familiar with all of those things. You obviously have your strong suit, but you know, you're the product. Right. So you want that product to, you want to be able to do as much work as you can. And then um, I think emotionally, mentally, you need to be prepared. Mm -hmm. You need to do the work to know who you are outside of the business coming in because it can be challenging. Yeah. Um, favorite quote ever, if you are what you do, then when you aren't, you're not. And mm -hmm. in this business, if you become what you do, if mm -hmm. that's what defines you, that is what will kill you. Destroy That's what will you. destroy Absolutely. you. Absolutely. If you're defined by what you do, then it doesn't take long of not doing it mm -hmm. for you to go fly fishing crazy, to just go nuts. And that's the biggest thing. And it's something that we don't spend a lot of time teaching young people. Who are you? What is, are you rooted in something? Is your foundation built on something real, honest, family, friends, integrity, work ethic, mm -hmm. relationships? The, all of that. I mean, if that's not intact and in place, um, it can be really challenging. 
You know, it's huge. It's huge. And no one taught me that, you know, so having that confidence and that balance in life and putting things in perspective, um, makes a big difference in how you handle rejection. What is your advice for someone handling the audition process and the rejection? It's very simple. This is Mm -hmm. what I tell people. Take the word rejection Mm -hmm. and replace it with answer. If you just realize it's an answer, universally, whatever your, your um, faith is based on or your belief system is or whatever, you have to know that that is, if you look at it as an answer, then you can turn and you can go to the next thing. You can go to the next audition. You can, you can do what you have to do next. If, you, if it's rejection, then it becomes something you can sit in much easier. Mm-hmm. It's much easier to sit in that. Mm-hmm. It's over. Go have a sandwich. Have a life. On. Have Back a to life. what you were saying right. before. Have a life. That, you have to. That balance. You have so you to. do your audition, you've done your job for the day, mm-hmm. and then you move on to the next thing. And it's an answer. If you don't get it, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever it is. Thank you for that answer. Now I, I move on to the next thing. What else do people need to prepare before moving to New York? Um, you mentioned coming to New York with seven hundred and fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. Is yes. that a good plan? You need money. You need a lot. <laughs> you need a of lot money. of money. <laughs> yeah. A whole no, lot you of money. do, and you yeah. have to be ready to kind of, you know, eat the ramen noodles and. It's an expensive place to it live. It is. Yeah. It costs money to walk down the street. I mean, mm-hmm. it just does. I mean, you get there and you get desperate, and people also have a tendency to go there and try to live the way that they lived with oh. mom and dad or with you know. When they lived in wherever, they want the same quality of life. And New York City, it's a very different thing. What constitutes uh, a bedroom Mm -hmm. in New York City is really like if (laughs) you can physically turn your body around, it's a bedroom. You know, so those things you're not used to. Um, So it takes, it takes some doing. It takes some getting used to. The thing to spend money on is your training. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, do you think people need to get their equity card prior to coming to New York? No. No. I don't think you need to get your equity card. I don't think you need to get an agent. I don't think you need to get a manager. I think you have to be very, um, you have to be bold and brave and convicted and and you'd be willing to go and, you know, pound the pavement. And my motto has always been, there are jobs to be had. It might as well be you mm-hmm. that gets them. So what about learning the business side of show business? Um, yes. Mm. That's the part none of us really like to do, but it's, I mean, it's imperative. You're mm-hmm. the product. You're the marketing director. You're the president of the company, CEO, founder. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So you got to do the work. You got to know it's what's Tony going Galdi, on. Tony Galdi, Inc. That's right. You have yeah. to know what's going on with all of it. You know. So marketing tools like headshots and resumes and all yeah. of that kind of thing eventually get... Um, agent um, yeah and I think to know to build a team exactly and Mm -hmm. to know who you are because a lot of people will tell you we want you to do that we want you to be we want you to mm, we want Mm -hmm. you to squeeze into this box and I think you also have to be really clear on who you are and what you want you know to do as well once you land a job Mm -hmm. what do you expect well um, theater jobs are um, it's crazy from the word go as soon as you get the gig it, it seems to start fairly quickly that you're preparing because they'll, st- they'll start you into costume fittings and all of that sort of thing before mm-hmm. you go into rehearsals. And then once you go into rehearsal, you're rehearsing 10 to 6 every day or 6 days a week. Um, and then you'll do that for maybe 5, 6 weeks. Then you go into tech, which is 10 out of 12. So you work 10 hours out of 12 hours every mm-hmm. day with no day off until you start your previews. So depending on how technical the show is, um, I did my Starlight Express, my first show, we were in 10 out of 12s for 35 days. So no day off. Trevor Nunn just keep, kept bumping the opening, partially because it was technically insane, partially because he was directing Les Mis at exactly the same time. Oh my gosh. He was running back and forth between the theaters. He kept bumping the opening. And so grown men in roller skates and 50 pound train costumes were in the back of the house bawling every time. Oh. Because our, our, we were just blistered and uh, it, was a, it was a mess because we would keep our skates on for the entire 12 hours because if we took wow. them off for our dinner break, our feet would swell and we couldn't get our skates back on. So this went on for 35 days and then we went into, uh, mm-hmm. after you go through the, that whole tech time, then you go into the previews. So you rehearse all day 
do your show at night. They make changes to the show during the day. You put the changes in that night. Some changes may take three or four days. So you're doing the old stuff at night, learning the new stuff for three or four days, what it's going to be. And then they'll go, okay, now put it in. And wow. whole new numbers will go in. Numbers will be cut. So, so it's really easy to be on Broadway? Yeah, it's so it's really <laughs> so, nothing. I mean, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's yeah. really easy. I mean, yeah. You nothing. have to love this. It's got to be in your heart and soul. And too. that process is heaven. Mm. That's, that's when you feel it. That's when mm. you feel theater. That's when you feel what you're doing. And then you start your run. And then, you know, you do eight shows a week, plus your rehearsals on Thursdays and Fridays. So you do, you know, a show Tuesday, two on Wednesday, rehearsal on Thursday, show Thursday night, rehearsal on Friday, show Friday night, two shows Saturday, one show Sunday for the most part. And what is life like for the dance captains and the swings and the understudies? Dance captain, which means you know, you have to know what everybody does and you have to put everyone into the show. You live at the theater. You just, they own you. So a swing uh, covers the ensemble. So mm -hmm. in Wicked, I covered six of the ensemble tracks. So you have to be ready to go on at a moment's notice, middle of the show, switch roles. We do what are called split tracks, which means you come in and there's four guys out. So they say, okay, Tony, this is what you're gonna do. Opening number, you do half of this track, then you switch to this one, sing their line, then go back to the other track, and you write it down on a paper towel and stick it in your underwear. And then while <laughs> you're doing a quick change, you look and go, hey, 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 hey. yeah. It's crazy, but... Um, Do you get an adrenaline rush from that? I love, I've always loved, I love it, I love it. I love that, oh, don't worry, I'll save you. I love, <laughs> I love that, it's awesome. So, but you do, it takes a tremendous amount of homework. Mm. You know, it's just spending the time to learn everything. The principal stuff is much easier mm -hmm. because, you know, you just lock into the character and there's such an obvious through line to what they're doing. And, you know, so that stuff was easier. And in Wicked, I did three of the four. Uh, principal roles and I mean that was cake. So what's your favorite part about performing on Broadway, a career on Broadway? Mm, I think the camaraderie, mm. you know there's something that community is so special and and you feel it when things happen. When I got to New York is when the AIDS crisis was really hitting our business mm. so it was mid 80s and to watch that community just I mean, it was beautiful to see everybody come, come together. together. And uh, so that, I think that's the biggest part of it. You know, it's, it's kind of groovy to be able to say, you know, I worked on Broadway <laughs> for 25 years, you know. Yeah, it's it pretty is cool. cool. It is cool. Um, I, I will say that it's a different environment. It's very different mm -hmm. because it is a corporate world. It is, you know, there's a lot of money that they're sinking into those shows. So... You have to find the love in a different place, mm -hmm. a different way. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you walk out of the stage door and you're in a Broadway show, and you know. Pretty darn it's cool. It's kind of neat. Yeah. Like Anthony, it. thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Truly enjoyed having you. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Have fun following your dreams. And check back on the MTT website. There are new instructional videos every four days. So watch them, like them, share them, and enjoy. See you next time. Bye.